Enigma is the largest study of the brain in the world, and it tries to understand how different brain diseases affect us by looking at data from 35 countries of the world. So it's really been an absolutely unique experience. For the last seven years, people have worked together to try and understand the different things that help and harm the brain. One of my colleagues in Australia said, well, why isn't it that brain researchers don't really share their data? Because he said in genetics, uh, we have these consortia where geneticists pull all of their information and we discover things together. So seven years ago, uh, he and I and a number of other scientists decided to look for everybody who had brain scans in different types of brain disease. And this really led to some of the largest studies ever done of the major conditions that affect the brain. Disorders such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's uh, in the neurology area, psychiatric conditions such as depression, bipolar illness, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. And a lot of the time these conditions are very, very puzzling. We don't always have good treatments. We're trying to understand how they affect the brain, what are the factors that put us at risk. And so Enigma pulls together a whole lot of data from brain scans and genetics to try and understand what's going on in each of these conditions. And really we relied on the expertise of people all around the world who'd been studying these disorders for some time. You'll see scientists in genetics and mathematics and radiology all working to together from different medical centers and different universities to pool their information and ideas about brain disease. Enigma has a large number of psychiatrists and radiologists um, and physicians who work directly with patients who are suffering from depression or post-traumatic stress or they may have a particular psychiatric condition such as obsessive compulsive disorder or even children with autism and, and other developmental uh, disorders. So what happens is if you go to a hospital and you have one of these illnesses, we collect a brain scan, we try and compare that with all the others from people with a similar illness and really build up a detailed picture of how each brain disease is affecting the brain. And so we see that in depression, the memory systems of the brain appear to be badly damaged. In other disorders such as Parkinson's or anorexia, there's very selective changes in the brain. And now that we can understand on a brain scan how these diseases look, we can begin to see if different treatments or different interventions are helpful in changing the brain back onto the right track. Well, one of the biggest questions we have is how our, our genetic makeup, uh, our DNA, puts us at risk for various diseases like Alzheimer's and depression and all sorts of other mental illnesses. And so all of these scientists around the world from 35 countries pooled their blood data, their brain scan data, and really combed through the genome to discover and pinpoint areas of the genome that put us at risk uh, for different disorders. So this is really just the beginning, but we've isolated certain hotspots in the genome that look like they affect the brain and our risk for disease. One of the things that mathematics is useful for is analyzing really huge amounts of data. And so in brain imaging in particular, and brain research in, in, in general, you have hundreds of thousands of brain scans of people with different conditions. So what got me excited about this is trying to understand you know, how different diseases affect people, uh, what are the best treatments, can we understand what puts us at risk, and then in the end, can we prevent them? No, nobody really knows the answer to these things on their own. And so even though we've been studying these diseases for decades, you'll always find a new insight or a new idea for a new direction of research. We know that only really by cooperating with scientists around the world, we can get a detailed picture of these things. And scanning the brain is costly. And so we know that to get a brain scan, it might be $500 in the US. So even to study these things is difficult unless you're combining information with a lot of other people. So that's been a tremendously uh, cost-effective and exciting way to do the research. So a lot of the diseases that we study, nobody really agrees how they affect the brain. And so, I mean, one example is uh, depression. And so a lot of people get very depressed because something terrible has happened in their life. They might have family trauma or they might have a stressful situation. Or in uh, military veterans, they may have experienced uh, conflict or combat that's had a lasting impact on their brain. So one of the things that we're seeing is that these changes in the brain are not irreversible. You can do something about them. Your brain changes your whole life. Every time you learn something or have a new experience 
or if you have a serious uh, condition, you know, the medications can restore some of the function to the brain. So I think one of the big lessons we've seen is that even though a lot of these conditions such as trauma or brain injury are devastating to the brain initially, there are all kinds of things that you can do to get back on track. And we're just studying which treatments are best, which treatments work best for different kinds of patients, and understanding how these, these different uh, interventions affect the brain. And you do find that for brain disorders, if you're in Japan and you have Alzheimer's disease, or if you're in the United States or in Europe, the same brain changes happen to you no matter where you are. And so I think this is something where it's very inspiring to really compare the information we have on different treatments to see what can be helpful to all of us who have to deal with these brain conditions. Really, it's just been a huge collective effort, scientists around the world working together and just comparing all the information they have on the brain and trying to look for better treatments. The Enigma studies are published uh, online. You can find uh, the largest studies of psychosis and depression and dementia. And if you really just look online for Enigma and the brain and Google it, you can find some of the discoveries that have been made by all of these scientists around the world.